I'm Gluten Free Gigi. I understand how difficult it can be to enjoy the foods you love on a special diet. That's why I'm making these videos. Come join me in the kitchen. Just in time for the holiday baking, I have the best money saving tip. You will love this. Let me show you what we're doing. Candied ginger. You know it's expensive. We can do it very affordably. I was just talking to my friend Bill last week in the supermarket and he was talking about making ginger scones. Well guess what? Candy your own ginger. Ginger root is very affordable. You buy it over in the produce section and I just like to break mine apart and take a vegetable peeler and peel the outside. Get this outer skin off and you're left with this really nice buttery colored root and I've already got some over here. Take a look at what I've already sliced, but I wanted to show you what it looks like in case you've never used it. Sometimes you see these root-like things in the produce section, and what do I do with that? But it's really simple. So just take away the bits that are uh, curved and they have the notches in them where I've cut this away. You can use this, but we'll get to that later. I really want to show you how to get this sliced so we can get to the candying part. So if you take it and slice it as thin as you can, use a really sharp knife. And these don't have to be perfect slices, but you get the idea. Now, notice that the ginger root piece I had was rather small. You can buy large ones, but those are much more fibrous and your finished product won't be quite as good. So if you take these slices, and I've got about two cups here. We have to do a couple things before we get to the canning. So let me tell you about this. I have a little bit of water in the pot over here. So come have a look. I'm going to have just enough water to cover this raw ginger root that I've sliced. And so we want to put it in here. I've got my water started on a medium high heat. And what we need to do is let this water come to a boil and then we'll reduce the heat and simmer our ginger root for 10 minutes. We'll do that twice, so I'm going to do that and then come back and we'll candy our ginger. It's been 10 minutes. Have a look at the ginger before I strain it. You can see it's a bit more yellow and it, it's starting to get a little translucent here. So let's go ahead and drain this. I'll just drain it in a colander here. I don't even need to take all the ginger out of the pot. So what we want to do is repeat that simmer process. And the reason we're doing that, let's get some water in here first, and then I'll tell you. Just to cover. So don't need too much water. Let's turn this up, bring it to a boil, and then reduce the heat just when it comes to the boil and simmer 10 more minutes. The reason we're doing this twice is because ginger is a very loud spice. We want to tone that down a little bit before we candy. 10 minutes and I'll meet you back. It's been 10 more minutes. This is our second time we have simmered our ginger root slices. So we're draining those and now for the fun part. So Bill, I hope you're watching and I hope you're paying attention because you will love this simple trick and it will save you a ton of money. Take your drained ginger slices and those are nice and tender now. It smells fantastic. Let's get rid of this and simple, simple. Got your ginger, two cups of water, two cups of granulated sugar, we are making what amounts to a simple syrup. We're going to put this on medium-high heat. I want you to give it a stir. And we're going to bring this to a boil and let this temperature come up without stirring to 225 degrees. So get your candy thermometer, come back, and I'll show you how it should look. Come see the action. We're at 206 and rising. This is what you should have in your pot and you don't want to stir this at all along the way. So I've got my two cups of water, two cups of sugar. I've got our two cups of sliced ginger that we've boiled twice for 10 minutes each time simmering. 
Now we're waiting for 225 degrees. A few more minutes will be there. When we get there, you come back. I'll show you two options to use this candy ginger. Have a look. I want to show you we're at 225. I'm taking out my candy thermometer now. I want to show you what it should look like. We've had lots of vigorous bubbles going on here and our mixture has reduced by about half in the pot. So we need to turn off the heat and I want to move the pot over and let me show you this beautiful sliced ginger. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? So let's go right over here and I've got two things I want to show you. First of all, you can take this ginger in the syrup and preserve it in a jar like this. And I love these little jars because I can have just enough for a future use, put it over ice cream or serve it with some uh, steamed pears is a great holiday dessert. Use a jar funnel and you can spoon some in. But first, this will need to cool for about an hour in the pot off the heat. We want to candy some ginger now. I'll let mine cool and preserve mine later in the syrup. But to candy your ginger, go ahead and take some of this out, put it right in a wire mesh sieve over a bowl, because if any syrup gets drains down in there, I want to save it. So I'll take a little more out and then I'll preserve the rest in the syrup. If you're doing it in the syrup in the jar, this will keep for up to a year, one year, in the refrigerator. How's that? So you'll have ginger all year long. The candy ginger, like I'm showing you now, you can keep this at room temperature in an airtight container for three to four months, and it'll be great. And I guarantee you, once you do this, it won't last you that long. So once you've got your ginger drained, and that looks great, I have about a third of a cup of sugar here. You don't have to measure that. Just put some sugar in a bowl. And put all your cooked ginger in there and we just want to give this a toss and I want to make sure that all of our little slices are coated and I have some extra sugar on hand in case I needed it but I think this looks like enough. Isn't that gorgeous? And you pay so much for this. This small amount of candy ginger would cost you probably between seven and ten dollars in the supermarket or the specialty food store and you're making it at home for just a couple dollars, if that. And you can have it for great recipes with your holiday baking and all year long. All right, so come over here. Just go in with your hands. Make sure everything is separate and tossed and it looks great. So take these slices and lay them out on a piece of wax paper. I have mine on a baking sheet so I can move this around the kitchen. And this needs to sit out at room temperature, uncovered, for eight hours or overnight. I like to leave mine overnight because you really get that dried, uh, crystallized ginger chewiness. And it's just so much better. So make sure before you store it, you dry it properly. Now that I've shown you how to do this, you'll love what I have for you next, my ginger cream scones recipe. And that's really what my friend Bill was after when I talked to him recently. Now that he can candy his own ginger, I can show him how to use this in a recipe for ginger cream scones. So don't miss that video.